Hello, I'm Bill Stoppard, and this is Podcast for Skaters, number three. It's going to get a little bit crusty, but that's a good thing. We humans have to have standards. Talking about gym etiquette there, but we'll get to that later. Okay, I'm opening up the questions here. I just took screenshots. That's my note taking lately. I used to write stuff down on a piece of paper that I was going to say. Now I just do screenshots of questions. If I can get past the pictures of Dexter. Yeah, he's beautiful. Here he is wearing his, what's that place called? Impact. His Impact Kitchen ball cap. I got that from a skater named Mike from New York. Got it from my favorite cafe just around the corner. Where it turns out, there's a brand new skater who's bought three wheels. It's so neat to hear that the new skaters are getting three wheels. It's not just something that the four wheelers are drifting into. It's like its entirely own market with an appeal of its own. That's great. Ninja Montaguez. You make helmets look cool. Thanks for the shout out. I don't make the helmet look cool. I look like the great kazoo in a helmet or like a mushroom. But with the Pit Viper glasses that were sent to me from Pit Viper, I think I look dangerous. This helmet is something I've been wearing lately because there are a few patches of ice on the road, like on some corners, in some gutters. So the possibility of going down very quickly with no warning is there. It's highly unlikely. But I wear the helmet when I'm doing something unfamiliar, when I'm a little nervous. When I'm skating backwards in the city, I always wear a helmet. I might go for like 40 meters at the most, backwards. Because skating is seeing. Weird question number one. Have you ever rolled an alley and seen something you shouldn't have? Yes, I've seen people doing the drugs. Not just smoking them, but injectables. That's not a good thing. I came around the corner about a year ago. Well, I didn't come around the corner, but I rolled around the corner and there was this guy pulling his pants up and a girl pulling her pants up. And I can only assume that they weren't peeing together, but it's possible. You never know. Some people are very cozy with that sort of thing. Biologically gregarious. Biologically amiable. Uh, I am biologically stingy. Okay, so yeah, there's your answer. Singapore Skater. That question was from Singapore Skater. Yes, you've heard questions from Singapore Skater before because Singapore Skater has very good questions. I'll probably answer his next question too. He gave me a weird question or a question to go in a weird direction. So thank you, Singapore Skater. Check out his channel. You could probably guess the name. Okay, this one is from Klesher. Have you ever had to use your skate to escape a scary situation? i.e. fire, gangland, shootout, UFO, plague, or zombies, etc. Well, yes, on a daily basis, I'm using my skates to escape zombies. I think it's why I skate. But other than that, the emergency escape. Oh, I stopped a, uh, a massive robbery of a tip jar when I was on skates. I was in Miami having a coffee at Big Star Cafe, which is where Crunch is now. But yeah, I was having a coffee, and the girl who served me was somebody I'd seen all the time. Very nice girl. And I saw a guy wait for her to turn her back and grab all the money in his fist from the tip jar. And spin away to run, and I was on my skates, so I stood up and just basically, like, tripped him to the ground and put a knee on his back. Yeah, the cops were, like, right next door. So I didn't have to hold him long. Adam Scotera. You didn't say a word about that car that cut you off around the 12 minute mark. Looked fairly annoyed though. I remember that moment very clearly because there was a leaf caught underneath my wheel. It felt like for the entire duration of my braking. But when I look at the video, it only seems like it was under there for like half a second. I was trying not to be angry at the car because I was in a crouch. It would have been hard for them to see. But when I review the video, it doesn't matter who I was. If I was a bicycle up nice and tall, they would have done the same thing. And there would have been worse consequences for sure. So yeah, I wasn't pleased with that person, but I wasn't freaking out. Except when the, uh, the leaf was under my wheel. I wasn't getting much traction. Just a moment, apparently. Finn Man J. 
says, I'd be really interested in hearing more about your music taste. Do you happen to have a Spotify that's followable? I don't have the Spotify playlist. But what's made the cut this week? Let's see what we have here. I've got a little bit of Eminem. I like this one by uh, uh, Brockhampton called Jouvert. Jouvert. This is workout and skate stuff. T.I. King. Iggy Azalea. I'm not mad at Lil' Kim. Ooh, it's lots of females. Pop it. Lil' Debbie. They're all Lil'. The girls never call themselves big, do they? Round. Trudy. Trudy. Now, there's a name you don't hear anymore. Sharon. You don't hear that a lot. But Trudy, that's definitely a 70s name. I'm really liking M.I.A. I won't explain it. It's intangible. Um, D. Unpwood. Nicki Minaj. J. Cole. Big Flo and Ollie. Pretty song. Is a song I like. I'm Nobody by Day, Din, and Knock. Yeah, that's just a few of the things. I do have my metal periods, hip hop periods. I never have a country period. So we'll talk a little bit about today's skate. I just went out for a skate looking for some varied geography. I thought the Sky Dome would have some steps and stuff for me to play with. Some jumps, maybe even do some repeated patterns. There's an area there where there's some small like one and two step jutty corners about five in a row where i just wanted to get into a pattern maybe do the same thing like eight or nine times but luckily for you that didn't happen i really wanted to do the repeat pattern get that particular section down to a signature instead of like a movement pattern or a uh, series of grunts and jumps and near misses so yeah, I found that it was a construction site. So I pretty much sk skated in the direction where I anticipated I could skate for longest. And a day's from Brazil. And she asks, Did you like living in England? Was it a good place to inline skate? And yes, I absolutely adored living in England. I had so much fun. I did so many things, saw so many countries, met an incredible number of people from different countries. It was a very good place to inline skate. I found there was very few degraded surfaces where it was just super messy to skate on, but overall the the uh, texture of the pavement was a little bit vibrating on the legs and it sucked the energy out of you. I don't know, I, I'm going to venture like, I don't know, like 10, 20%, maybe more. But it was noticeable. There are some surfaces that were very fast. But yeah, no super shitty roads in the parts of London I went to. I guess it's the temperate climate. There's not as much contraction and expansion of pavement, so they remain the same for the most part. This is Go Fix Mix. Love these podcasts. Question. Do you have any good secret skate spots in London that you're willing to share? I love skating between St. Paul's Cathedral and the Riverside then going over the Millennium Bridge and skating around a little bit in Bankside. My favorite stairs, the ones that challenged me the most, and probably made it so most stairs don't really phase me, are those stairs that go from, I don't think it's Haymarket Street, from, but that area, that, that corridor going from Piccadilly Circus down to the mall. Mall? Mall? So yeah, there's a, a three-set and I don't know how many steps there are, probably like 11 or 12. Maybe I'm exaggerating. Maybe they've expanded in my memory. But I found them quite a rigid ride. I have really enjoyed skating. I thoroughly enjoyed skating down the mall toward Buckingham Palace. I never got tired of the view. That was Dexter, my, my cat. I was going to tell you he has a dog. We're going to wrap this dog. Um... Yeah, I like the area around St. Paul's, near the river. The narrow cobblestone alleys, which were hell on the legs, but made you feel invincible when you went onto something smooth. Smooth. Is Seba still in business? Is Seba still in business? That's from Just 8 Bits. So yeah, my last podcast, number two, I'd say go read the thread, the replies. I don't know. 
I've heard that one company is running one line and the originals are running the other line, but I always get stuff mixed up and this is too important for me to bastardize. I think the lines exist, but the corporate structure has metamorphosized. Okay, here's something that I wasn't asked any questions about, but it's really been on my mind lately. It's a few things gym etiquette wise, but one thing in particular. Let me start with explaining that back in olden times when I was just a liftling, when you got your weights from the dumbbell rack, you took them away from the dumbbell racks to a place where you would exercise with them. And then when you were done with them, maybe you kept them for a few sets, but when you were done with them, you brought them back to the rack and then you left the rack. So what is old man Bill going on about here? Well, what I see a lot lately is like, especially with guys who are doing shrugs, they'll grab their weights, take one step back and do their shrugs. And if somebody was like walking through and wanting to put their weights away or somebody wants to grab the weights in front of them, it doesn't matter because he's doing his shrugs. So it interrupts the flow of the floor. It's super annoying. Some guys actually set up camp right in the spot in front of the dumbbells, doing a, a bent over row with your hand on the dumbbell rack because you, you're too lazy to carry your dumbbells far away from the rack. I don't get it. If you can't carry them away from the rack, maybe you shouldn't be lifting them. Just a little friendly advice from a scornful, crusty lifter. But yeah, there should be like red paint. There should be green paint, red paint. I don't know. There should be bright colored paint in that area to denote that it's a traffic area and not a place to stand and do curls so you can get a really good look at your bicep. That's cool, but you can do that from afar. And then you can see your deltoids rippling too. Look for good lighting. Don't look for proximity to the mirror. You'll like what you see, trust me. Oh yes, the guys who stand in front of their lockers and dry themselves off very proud of their bodies, but they're standing in their own puddle, flicking their water everywhere. And of course, at one point you're in socks and you step in a little bit of their gym juice. Thanks for the wet socks. Yeah, those guys totally suck. I also find it really weird when I'm doing a squat and then somebody comes up very close behind me and starts doing an exercise. I almost always complete my set early and then move on to a different area. What do I like in the gym? I like that we all have personal devices to listen to. So, so whatever's on the radio, you don't have to attach to when you're working out. It's very hard for a gym to satisfy the musical needs of, you know, a, a general membership coming from all genres. Probably not a lot of country down in my area. Blues, not a lot of funk probably not a good place to play jazz. Do people work out to jazz? A big shout out to Sonic Sports, who is a very proud sponsor of Pinto Pony Productions. Oh, extremely proud. Sonic Sports has a fun selection of inline products for the city skater or trail skater. And they just like city skater. But yes, you want to play hockey? They've got a wide variety of pucks. I would suggest getting five pucks, different colors. They're also useful for obstacles. If you want to do slalom on them instead of packing cones or rubber pucks, as I used to do, I pack these because they're significantly lighter than the rubber pucks and the colors catch my eye. And let's face it, when you're shooting pucks, you don't want to shoot one puck and then go chase it. So yes, grab your favorite colors. I think the orange, blue, and yellow looked really good together. Very Gauguin. So yeah, that's how I feel about that. Oh, their tools are amazing. I like the little pro tool that fits in your fist. Enter the dragon style. It's a handy little tool and I've got mine in Pinto Pony Orange. But they have a few other cool colors and they're coming out with a wide array. A wider array. They've also got aggressive wax wax that's very aggressive it's not for your follicles but it's for rails but you're an aggressive skater and you want to wax your legs you're out of luck you want to wax some rails sonic sports is your go-to site initially i tried to avoid people completely going through cycle lanes alleys and back corridors 
But I always lose that whole aversion to people about halfway through. That's podcast number three. Thanks so much for dropping by at Podcast for Skaters. I hope your wheels take you on some massive explorations this week. Yeah, that's where I'm going now. Exploration. Get out there. 